lots of new stuff you've got in Yes. That's Mahum true. Afraz is a 26-year-old doctor born in Pakistan who hoped that hundreds of guests, including extended family from abroad, would attend her wedding this weekend. Both my husband and I are from Punjab in Pakistan. A grand Pakistani wedding is really extravagant. The family paid for a Sydney waterfront venue, but COVID-19 travel bans forced them to postpone the reception until next year. $20,000 in deposits, um, but they've all been transferred across, so we're very lucky. I know some other couples weren't that lucky. Mahum and Usman opted for an intimate Islamic wedding in the family home, hoping international borders will reopen in time for their big celebration next year. We'll be using that decorative bike as well. Her wedding planner, Nita Tanner, specialises in South Asian weddings. They are among the most festive, with celebrations continuing for days. But this is no typical wedding season. So normally in spring, we would do about 30 to 50 events in a month, which has now narrowed down to hardly five. As wedding restrictions ease, Nita says couples are starting to plan again, with some nuptials live streamed abroad. Even though it's a small wedding of 20 people, they're having live broadcasts so that the family can see the worldwide. Photographer Tim Engelbrecht is also pivoting to live streaming, despite a lot of cancellations this season. Spring is easily the biggest time of the year for the wedding industry, and usually we'll be doing three up to five weddings per week. And this time around, we're doing maybe one, sometimes none. So it's had a massive impact on our business. Business is also slow for florist Katie Bloom. Most florists that do functions would probably earn about 80% of their year's income over the next sort of six or eight weeks. And now I have two for October, and that's all I've got for the rest of the year. Katie can only hope bookings boom again soon as more couples rush in to tie the knot.